Um, I'm going to dig right in because I do have a number of different slides that I want to get through that are pretty content heavy. Um, and I just want to say that that I'm going to be leaving the slides with Chris and, and I understand that he's going to be sending them out. So please do use my PowerPoint presentation as a future resource as well as, uh, you know, gleaning some information that I'm going to try to get through in, in the short 15 minutes I have. So next slide, I'm going to dig in right just to pivot right exactly where Francis left off. Um, and that is just trying to hone the understanding of, of a, a linear versus a circular economy. Um, and, and I think um, circular procurement versus sustainable procurement is important to acknowledge that there is an actual difference. And generally, it's it's described best for me anyways, my understanding was really grounded in this comparison, which is sustainable procurement is trying to find ways within the take, make and waste uh, linear economic model and find a way to be more sustainable within it. Whereas if you are really looking at products and services in a system, in an economic system, that you're looking for um, opportunities for them to be more restorative and regenerative. So, um, and, it, and it's really about highest utility and, and def redefining the value of goods, which I'm gonna dip into a little bit more deeply in the next slide. Next slide, Zuh. So when we think about a systems approach, um, the circular uh, nature of that graphic really tells us all the phases that uh, procurement has really power to influence just based on that transaction of, of making the decision of what and how and from whom you are procuring. And so every single transaction is a part of a system and it can affect a system. And so uh, while you may think your role as procurement and asset manager is you know, just one cog in a wheel, you're a very important cog in terms of affecting the entire system that uh, needs to be transitioned under a circular economy. And that starts with this idea of defining value. And when we think about purchasing a product or procuring a system, we, we, we're, we're thinking about, again, that transaction and the product itself versus what is that value that the product or the service uh, gives to me as, 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 a, um, as a procurer. And when you start thinking about it in, in that value context, very quickly you can start thinking about redefining it in the sense of restoration and regeneration. Next slide. So the simple act of procuring can derive these triple bottom line goals, which are often competing in some cases, and in some cases can be overwhelming because we know that in particular municipalities who have a very uh, special uh, power, uh, buying power, are pulled in many, many directions and are often ran thin in terms of prioritizing social versus environmental versus economic tensions that come with making procurement decisions. But I'm happy to say that under a circular economic or circular procurement model, you can actually drive these three triple bottom line benefits at the same time. Um, and you do it in more with a more collaborative and cooperative relationship with your vendors and suppliers. And I'll touch that. Uh, on that in, in subsequent size as well. So it's not about choosing one over the other, or even in sometimes conceding one for the other. We think that buying with more environmental or less environmental impact costs more money. That's not actually always the case. Uh, and we're gonna bring some case studies that will prove the point. Next slide. Um, and I think we can say, um, you know, based on uh, France's acknowledgement of those municipalities in particular, and of course the commitments made at a federal provincial level, that, um, you know, climate change is a crisis, that a climate change is top of mind, and that we've made commitments at the local and, and, and at every level, quite frankly, in the public and private sector around reducing carbon emissions. Um, but what's exciting about procurement is, in fact, we know from studies that 45% of the opportunity to hit our target is embedded in the products that we actually choose to purchase. So when you think about procurement as it relates to reducing emissions, you think about transport or building uh, uh, operations. But in fact, the only way Canada and the municipalities within it are gonna hit their climate targets is looking at the products they actually purchase and what the embedded carbons is um, as it relates to bringing that product to market, its use, and then end of life. So just 
um, again, uh, emphasizing the, uh, the the beautiful glacier um, that uh, or iceberg that uh, that uh, Francis um, showed you in terms of where the impact really is. Next slide. So talking about the uh, power that is uh, in, uh, lies with municipalities, we know that public procurement in particular on a Canadian context, so all governments rolled up into one, have uh, a, a total buying power of about $200 billion. And that represents 15% of Canada's GDP. So point is made with numbers like that, that you have enormous influence. And not only do you have influence directly in the procurement of goods and services, but you actually are a stim uh, have opportunity in terms of how you choose to stimulate the economy, which is present and, and uh, ever present as it relates to a post-COVID world. Um, in addition, you are effective partners and you do in your own right fund other organizations. And so you can attach circular requirements and circular objectives um, to that funding. And of course, you are ecosystems for, um, for training and, and innovation around, around local employment. So lots of opportunity within your own, within the public uh, um, sector in terms of driving um, procurement. And because of the size of the GDP effect in Canada, you actually can be a pace setter or a market mover, as we say. You can, you can push the market in a direction. And as, as, as Francis has said, that um, they're there as a, as a supplier to government and, and, and the private sector, of course, to delight their customers. And so your, the way you drive those companies is really in your ask. And the interesting thing about procurement is that it's completely scalable. So often we think, oh, I'm not a big enough municipality or I only have small communities um, or I'm just a small buyer, I don't have a voice that it is completely scalable and all of your suppliers and vendors want to continue to do business with you. And so they will meet you in, in your demands as you move forward, irrespective of how the size of your budget is. Someone will want to, to meet your, your specifications. Next slide. So drilling down into the role of cities and municipalities in particular, we're starting to see the trends that more and more of Canada's population is, is, is living in an urban or near to urban setting. And what that means is you have these hot pockets of procurement um, that in fact, little ecosystems of opportunity within the municipal sector. And that aligns very nicely to the next slide, which talks about of that 200 billion, 160 billion of it or 80% is rests with the municipal governments. And so when we talk about the, 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 the uh, power of public procurement in particular, collectively municipalities are where it's at. And so uh, what's, what's, what's uh, moreover, um, or in addition to that, that enormous buying power and influence, you are the ones that actually ironically are the ones that have to manage the results of a linear economy. You're the ones managing the climate emergencies. You're the ones dealing with waste on, an, on, an, on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's a direct connectivity between your opportunity to drive circularity in a Canadian context and mitigating the very liability and costs that are, that are, that are subjected to you in a linear econ economic framework or model. You are, because of that population uh, hub, certainly the hub of our, our population realities. You are the hub of the Canadian economy. And you are, because of that, uh, perfect incubators for innovations and catalysts of change. And you have a direct relationship, unlike any other government, with your residents, your businesses, and your community-based organizations. So uniquely positioned to really drive this agenda, this exciting agenda. And on top of that, you're very nimble in your policy making when compared to the other um, layers of government. And so tremendous opportunity again to activate and to make changes very, very quickly. So we know that the circular economic evolution requires a system change, but it's very well positioned to start with municipal governments. Next slide. So what are the competing interests? We hear all the time, and I'm learning every day from asset managers and procurement uh, specialists, of which I am not. But how do what what are the pains that you deal with on a regular basis, where that we that we should be aware of, that we should know we need to manage and tackle as we move circularity forward in terms of procurement? 
there's always a call out for prudent spending. Lots of eyes um, need to be transparent just by nature of, 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 of um, the way that you are spending taxpayers' dollars. You certainly want to make sure that you're maintaining competitive processes. You've got these social and environmental pressures are there as well. So um, uh, lots of competing interests that have to be top of mind and we can't forget that as we move towards circularity. Next slide. So how do we begin to buy circular? Next slide. So when I break down, and this is an example of one upper tier municipality in Ontario, um, where the where the buying and influence power generally is, and we are um, we have many mentor organizations in in Europe, and and one thing we've learned from them over the last couple of years is you really start by just doing, and so when you when you parse out your spend categories and you see the the amounts, and these are pretty indicative of most municipalities, again irrespective of size and type and location that you can see where the big gains might be on a dollar value, or the flip side of that is simple changes you can make now. And I think we toggle between the two in terms of where to start. Next slide. These are the five business uh, circular business models. And when we talk about how to buy circular, the first thing we do is socialize or educate buyers and asset managers uh, of finance departments and of course sustainability support departments on what it means to buy uh, circular and Francis already mentioned product as a service as a new way of of gleaning the value of a product again what does the product give me not the product it's, itself I want to get from A to B I don't need a car so it's just a little paradigm shift in the way that you're deriving value of a product next slide so what drives procurement decisions? And, and again, um, le linking to the earlier slide, we understand that really price is king, a price is driving all decisions. Um, and that second to that is really this, this, in some cases perceived, but it may be real levels of risks that are always measured as it relates to those decisions. And then thirdly, what, how is this going to look on me in terms of my, cho my choosing, uh, my, my procurement choice? And so community impact and sort of reputation that's aligned with that is a third top of mind pillar. Next slide. So we have to bear those in mind. Um, and, 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 and as we're starting to make changes, I think there's two areas that we have to think about. And, and um, Francis touched on them on the newly released or about to be released um, um, results of the study that, that she has completed. But I think it starts with recognizing that there is maybe some um, a disconnection, I guess, in terms of current structure and processes. We've acknowledged um, in Chris's uh, opening remarks, this disconnect between asset management, procurement, finance, budgeting, and decision making. And I think one of the things we need to do right off the bat is to link these in a more productive and meaningful way in order to ensure that asset managers and procurement influencers are at the front end of those decisions. Um, and often the process now is, is, is so crunched for time that there's very, very um, in, there's no time for innovation. There's no time to really consider procurement requirements through the lens of circularity. There's absolutely no time to innovate and to discuss these matters with your suppliers and vendors in terms of the art of what's possible. Next slide. The second big barrier is this idea of change management. So we're all people, um, we all have a role to play and we know what we know and we're comfortable in what we know. And so we, we have to recognize here that we have to educate and provide opportunity for those that are influencing these decisions and so that they understand and they have comfort level that you're not giving up the things that are important to your function, but in fact, you're trying to make them easier with adopting circular practices and to have the confidence um, that, you've, that you are um, making the right decision. Um, that's, that's really at the end of the day, vertically integrated and really has a direct um, impact on the broader public objectives that your municipality or your government has chosen to make. And so I think we have to support those that are pivotal to this change management and provide them as much tools and resources as they need to, to upsell this idea and work with their colleagues, again, in a system that is the municipal um, reality, uh, but also 
um, to uh, make sure the vendors and suppliers know what you're doing as a buyer so that they can come along with you and evolve um, and deliver on, on, the, on the new requirements. Next slide. So um, I can't, I, I've dedicated a slide to this because I wanna make sure that everyone there understands that we sort of understand your plight. And we've heard this from, from conversations with Umesh and, and Chris that, that procurement and asset management functions have a critical role that are often um, you know, at the end of this process and don't, um, aren't garnered the influence that, that they should and should be really involved at the onset of the street strategic direction to remind municipalities that you must use your procurement power first to drive social and environmental objectives. Next slide. So um, these are still, um, and I'm just mindful of time here. So, you know, we, we've got a lot of sort of starting places with respect to how to start to purchase circularly. The first is to not to equate price with value. And I think unpacking that and thinking about what is the value that the, that the product provides is the first step. Um, and that purchase price doesn't actually um, uh, mean that the lowest cost is your best value. So equating it, um, connecting those two. Um, deriving value through vendors and suppliers might mean that you might change your relationship with a little bit um, in, in terms of where you are with, with them now. Um, be more open, be transparent. Explain to these vendors and suppliers what are your ultimate goals as a municipalities and uh, a signal to them that you are starting to connect your procurement practices in driving those broader public policy objectives. Um, and then leaving, departing a little bit from this transaction approach to, to, to more performance base in your RFPs versus your specifications and encouraging creativity and innovation while keeping this idea of getting best value and, and keeping competitive. Using market insights and indicators to inform um, the development of specifications, reach out to your vendors and suppliers to see where they're at now and what they can deliver on now when asked and to signal to them simultaneously where you want to head. Um, and then, of course, assigning meaningful, meaningful points to the criteria themselves so that they're not a, uh, off the side of your desk and they're nice to have, but they're not core to actually making the choice. Next slide. So um, three sort of buckets, redefining value, encouraging accountability of the organizations that you buy from. So that's going up that supply chain um, right to the decisions uh, beyond just the product of the companies that are that are offering the product to you. Um, and then thinking about um, circular procurement as a strategic tool to drive economic uh, value and advancements, innovations, training, local investment and job creations, all of the things that we sort of align with economic um, um, uh, value and advancement. Next slide. Um, I think we'll split this slide just to, again in the spirit of time and giving enough time for Andrea, but uh, I just want to go through a couple of the events. Next slide, please, that we're going to be hosting. Um, I won't go through the case studies now, but yeah, I, I, I can leave them in the, these are case studies uh, that we pulled from other procurement um, activities of other nations that give you a good idea of how they, you know, what they implemented, how they changed their criteria and their process and what the, the results were both in environmental, social and economic gains. So we can go through the next three slides and we'll get to the last slide, the last three slides. Yeah, so this is an opportunity um, that we'd like to extend. Um, Canada is hosting the World Circular Economy Forum in September of, uh, of 2021. It is a virtual event, September 13, 14, and 15, of which we will be hosting a specific um, accelerator event on circular procurement. But uh, connected to that, and, and that's a precursor actually to a dedicated procurement summit, which I'd love all of you to pencil into your calendars. Um, the first two days of Waste Reduction Week in Canada, which are October 18th and 19th, we're hoping to have an in-person and virtual event hybrid, all things restrictions, um, right here in, uh, in Ontario. Um, so we'll make sure that Chris and, and Mesh have all the, the information that they can get out to, uh, to you as attendees. Um, so look for more information about that. Um, the other, next slide. 
The other thing that we have um, been asked to do is join a global circular and fair ICT pact. So this is a grouping of, of 13 countries, you see the flags there, who have joined together to develop criteria, buying criteria specifically to advance circularity in the information communication and, and telecommunication industry. Uh, recognizing that some of these 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 um, companies are, are 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 large and they sell globally, and so the idea is to pool the buying power between these nations um, and to uh, hopefully advance circularity um, uh, uh, with that buying power um, in this in this category. Um, you will find all of the information about the criteria development, including some of the certifications, which we'll be unpacking and. and analyzing as it relates to circularity and fairness. Um, and so all of that information is open source um, on our circularprocurement.ca website, which is on the next slide, uh, where you can find resources, tools about circular procurement, circular economy, and of course, implementation tools, which I know everyone is anxious to, uh, to see. So, uh, and my uh, contact information is on the following slide. Um, thank you very much again for the opportunity, Chris, and uh, congratulations to Asset Management Ontario for hosting the event.